in his hands He got a plan in his hands We don't gotta worry Hey, listen, stand to our feet as we, as we bring our guests I ask that you all show him some love by making a loud as noise you can and clap for our guest, Pastor John D. White. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise on this morning. Come on, we could do better than that. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. For this is a day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. For I'm truly honored to be here. I want to give honor to the angel of this house and the person of Pastor Alvin Jackson Sr. Lady Jackson, God bless you. To the family. Pastor Alvin Jackson Jr. and to your wife, God bless you. We thank and praise God for you. Amen. For I count it a true honor and a privilege. Amen. To be in the house of the Lord on this morning. Bring you greetings from Bishop Willie Thornton and King of Kings International Church. Amen. In Taylor, Michigan. Actually, Bishop is in Cape Town, Africa right now. He's ministering. So let's... I just continue to solicit your prayers on his behalf. But who's ready to hear the word on this morning? Come on, who's ready to hear the word on this morning? For the word of God said that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. And like I said, I don't count it. Amen. I take it very seriously when you stand behind this sacred desk. Amen. To bring um, the word. Young lady, you're right here. You, you. That's tap. You grew up on. Are you Tiffany's mother? Mims. Are you? Is is. Okay. I grew up on Biltmore, across the street from your dad. That's me with the Rottweilers. I'm John. <laughs> God bless you. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. Amen. Amen. If you can. I'm not going to be before you long. I promise you, I will get you out of here by midnight. Amen. If you, just, if you just bear with me, turn your Bibles to the 37th division of Psalm. Amen. We're going to read verses 1 through 8. Amen. I believe there's a word from the Lord. You know, we all need encouraging on this morning. Amen. Pastor Jackson, you did surprise me with that video. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God has been faithful. He's been good. He's definitely been kind to us. Thank you. Will you have it say, man? Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as a light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you on this morning for your word, for it is power and it is life. Now, Father, we ask you to give us eyes to see, give us ears to hear, give us a heart to perceive and receive of thee. 
Father God, we pray that I would decrease and that you would increase the more on today. Father God, make these words come to life on today. That someone will be inspired. Someone will be motivated. Someone will be renewed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. We thank and we praise God for his word. Amen. On this morning. You know, Bishop has been preaching lately. He's been preaching destiny. He's been preaching about destiny and, and pursuing your destiny, how destiny is coming and destiny is here. Amen. And I was listening to Pastor Jackson. He was speaking about how his sister went through what she went through this week. Stay on your journey. Stay on your path. Re regardless of what happens, just stay on your path. Many don't know I'm the praise and worship leader at our church. And I, I don't know how I became the praise and worship leader. One day, Bishop, you know, he was doing everything in the church, and he was just like, you know, uh, Elder White opened up service. And I've been leading ever since, I think, 12 years ago, Pastor. <laughs> 12 years ago. But let's get into the word. To everything God gave an atmosphere, to everything he gave an atmosphere, to the birds, he gave the air, to the fish, he gave the sea, to the animals, he gave the, the earth, but to you and I, he gave his glory. He gave us his glory. He gave us, he clothed us with his glory, which is called the kebab of God, which is the, the weight of God. He clothed us with his glory. But out of every creature in the world, we were the only ones who lost our place. We were the only ones that didn't remain in our atmosphere. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? When, when, when man fell in the garden, we lost our place. But somebody say, but God. For John 1 and 1 says that, for in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the, and the word was God. It goes down and saying, the word was made flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. This word, this word, saints of God, is Jesus. He's our savior. Uh, he's our deliverer. Some people call him, as the psalmist say, he's our way maker. He's our miracle worker. He's our, our promise keeper. He's even our light in the darkness. Jesus. Let's talk about him on this morning. Jesus, the one who is and, and who is to come. For man to get to God, he must go by the sun. He must go through Jesus. Jesus, it's a name that is above all names. The name of Jesus cannot fail. It's a name that will never fail, for he will never leave us. He will never forsake us, but he will be with us even to the end of time. When you have the name of Jesus stamped on you, you have his nature, you have his character, and you have his authority. Ah, Lady Jackson Pastor, if she wants to go to the bank and, and, and take out a withdrawal, as long as she carries that name Jackson, guess what? She can take out whatever she wants out of that bank account because she carries the name. There's authority in the name. Look at your name and say, do you have that name? Yes, yes, we need that name. I work in the school system. I, I'm the dean of students at Detroit Renaissance High School, and, 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 and I watch these young people daily. And I'm afraid of this generation. Oh, I'm afraid of this generation because they believe they can live and do life without Jesus. They believe they can just be rogue and do what we want to do without any consequence. Many believe that if I just do the best that I can, 
Jesus understands because he knows my heart. Yes, he knows our heart. That's right, he knows our heart. For the word of God says that it is deceitful and, and desperately wicked. Who shall know it? Who shall know what's in the heart? That's why as, as preachers and, and it's our solemn duty to preach Jesus. We have to give this world Jesus. For we are priests. We are priests which are middlemen. We're middlemen. We take the people to God and, and, and we bring God to the people. But how shall they call on him? In whom they have not believed. And how should they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how should they hear without a preacher? And how should they preach except they be sent? Ah, but that's the problem with many on today. Many are just going and they're not sent. I think you missed it. Many are going, but they're not sent. This generation must hear and know, children of God, about Jesus. For if we don't warn the wicked of their ways to save their life, and they die in their iniquity, their blood will be on our hands. Look at your name and say, bloody hands. Bloody hands. We must tell them that they must be born again. We must tell them that they got to be born of this water and of the spirit. That John chapter 3, verse 3, when, when, when Nick at night, I call him, Nick at night came to Jesus. He came to Jesus. Now, let me tell you something about Nicodemus. People always wonder, first of all, why did he come to Jesus by night? Why at night? Now, he, he's, a, he, he's what you call a, a master teacher. He understood the Torah. He understood the scriptures. He understood, but he wanted to know. He said, he wanted to know, Lord, what must I, why, what, what must I do to walk with you? He, Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So in order even to see the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. Nicodemus asked Jesus, he said, how can a man be born again? Can he enter into the mother's womb a second time? Then Jesus replied and said, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Look at your name and say, are you born again? Yes, yes, we need. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need him more than we ever need him in these last days, Pastor. We need him more. Listen, we need Jesus on our jobs. We need Jesus in our homes. We need Jesus in our schools. We need Jesus at Kroger. We need him at Walmart when that person cut us off with that car. You want to baptize him with a with a buggy, we need Jesus wherever we go. We need him. We need him. We're living in an evil day. And the believers are clothed. If you're not clothed with the whole armor of God, you'll be open to the attacks of the enemy. If you're not clothed with the whole armor of God, you're open to the attacks of the enemy. Now when, I, now when the anointing of the Lord is upon you, children of God, you got to understand this. When, when, when the anointing is upon you, it comes with what I call triple A. I ain't talking about the insurance, but triple A. And we must understand that there's two sides of triple A. There's two sides of it. When God sends you out, he sends us, Pastor, if you, could, if you can agree with me, he sends us with authority, he sends us with an anointing, and he sends us with an assignment. 
He sends us with these three things. But we must know with those three things, the enemy will also have his own agenda. He will have his own agenda. Look at your neighbor and say, the anointing attracts attacks. The anointing attracts attacks. So when God anoints you and he sends you on an assignment, you best believe the attacks of the enemy are going to come. For Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, he said, a great and effectual door has opened to me. Now listen, he said, and there are many adversaries. I'm standing at a door. Now mind you, you can't get it twisted between adversaries and enemies. Two different things. An adversary is one who's going to go against everything that you do. An adversary could be your wife. An adversary could be your best friend. An adversary could be somebody you're coaching. I'm teaching you I'm doing one thing, but you're going to make everything so hard that you want to go like this with me. Right when you at your breakthrough, right when God is about to bless you exceeding abundantly above all you can actually think, here comes the enemy. Right at your door, right at your breakthrough, right when he's about to bless you, somebody steals your car, right when he's about to give you everything you need, they break in your house. Right at the doorstep of your blessing. The word of God tells us, children of God, to think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which are the trials as if some strange things happen. When you're stamped in the name of Jesus is on you, when you're stamped in the name of Jesus is on you, don't think it's strange concerning nothing that comes up against you. But yet, that's when you got to go into your private closet and begin to bless his name. For the Bible, I will bless his name at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Regardless what I'm going through, I will bless the Lord. Because on this Christian journey, on this Christian journey, tests and trials will come. I came by here today to encourage somebody that regardless of what the enemy is trying to throw your way, it won't work. Even in the midst of adversity, children of God, look at your name and say, you win. No matter what you're going through, you win. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Yes, they try to scandalize your name. Yes, they try to discourage you from pressing on. Yes, they lied on you. Yes, they ridicule you. But we are more than conquerors through him that love us. And his name is Jesus. Ah, many of us are at our midnight hour. We're at that point of transition. The midnight hour is the point of transition. The enemy comes to do three things, and these three things are to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Ah, he comes to steal your joy. He tries to come to steal your passion. He tries to come to steal your anointing. Yes, and he tries to come to kill your dreams. He tries to come to kill your vision. He tries to come to kill your love walk. And that's why we got to be careful because when he messes up your love walk, it puts you out of alignment with the Father. He tries to destroy your destiny. He tries to destroy your family. And he tries to destroy your now. The devil is on assignment to stop us from going 
where Jesus wants us to be. Now, right at your breakthrough, he tries to bring breakdown your way. But that's when you try to do, that's when you equip yourself with the whole armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Look at your neighbor and say, just stand. Just stand. That military word right there means that just stand. No, no matter what you do, just don't give up the ground that God has already given you. You have to stand right there even in the midst of the storm. Sometimes you have to go through it, but God is for you. And if God is for you, who? Come on, say who? Who can be against you? Ah, children of God. I don't care what the obstacles are that's standing before you. God is able to handle any and every situation you are facing. Oh, look at Father Abraham. Look at Father Abraham who uprooted from his land. And people to follow God's command to go to a land that he will show him. Children of God, it shows us that God is with us every step of the way. Ah, then there's Gideon. You can have the victory as long as God is on your side. Numbers do not matter with God. Once you have him, you are the majority. Daniel, oh, Daniel, you can walk into the lion's den with all the odds stacked against you and still come out victorious, and the lion will be your friend. Oh, Mordecai, if we are faithful to God and leave things in his hand, he will deal with you, or we will deal with your enemies, and they will not prevail against you. The same gallows that they built for you, they will be paying from those very same gallows. Oh, Hannah, Hannah, oh, praying Hannah, when people will write you off and ridicule and mock you. Just remain fervent in prayer and watch God step in right on time and put your enemies to silence. Oh, King David, when God's favor is upon you, he protects you from any attack of the enemy and he will always be victorious. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm victorious. Oh, God. And stay on the wall just like Nehemiah. No matter how great the task may be, how little help you may have, and regardless of the people mocking you, but when you're doing something in the name of the Lord, you will succeed and prosper. Here's our brother Job. Oh, Job, he preserved through the trials and tribulations, yet he remained faithful unto God because of his faithfulness. God rewarded him greatly. Children of God, you may come out better, you may come out bruised, but when in an unwavering faith in God, you will come out on higher ground. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to go higher. It's time to go higher. Now as I close, here in the 37th division of Psalms, the author is King David. Let's talk about King David for a minute. The Bible said that God gave Saul specific directions. He gave King Saul specific directions to go and utterly destroy the Amalekites. But as you read the word of God, you see that Saul had his own agenda. He had his own agenda. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to keep King Agag. I'm going to keep the best of everything. So when God visited Samuel, He said, I repent that I ever made Saul king over my people. Ooh, can you imagine God repenting that he ever gave you something? That's serious. Go 
Go to Saul. Go to him now. Got to get him out of office. Listen, God is the only person that will fire you and allow you to stay on the job. He's the only one that will fire you and allow you to stay on the job. So Samuel gets there. He gets there. What is this bleeding of the sheep that I'm hearing in my ears? Saul, what have you done? The first thing, somebody say accountability. Listen, Peter. People have a problem with accountability nowadays. They have a problem with accountability. So many people want the pleasure without the responsibility. The first thing Saul does, he said, it wasn't me. They did it. That was them. They, they bought this stuff back. Who's the king? See, when you fail to be accountable, you fail at life. There's six things I tell. If you don't know, I'm the basketball coach at Renaissance, too. So it's six things that I tell my, my athletes. It's six things that I tell my students. You have to do these six things in life to be accountable. Be faithful. Be dependable. Be trustworthy. Don't be late. Don't be lazy. Don't be a liar. I promise you, if you do them six things in life, you will hold yourself accountable in every area of life. King Saul refused to take responsibility. Therefore, is that Madison back there? Hey, Maddie, one of my students. Love you, girl. When, when he refused to take accountability, God removed him from office. So, next chapter, God was kind of angry with Samuel because he was mourning Saul. So how long will you mourn Saul, seeing that I have rejected him from being king? How long are you going to sit here and, and, and just mope around? Get up. I have already chosen his replacement. Children of God, don't ever think you cannot be replaced. I don't care what Beyonce says. I don't care what no one, none of these singers say. Irreplaceable. The devil is a liar. Everybody can be replaced. Ain't nobody wonderful. There's only one wonder. And that's Jesus. So he tell them, get up. Sent them to Jesse's house. Who's the father of David. So he gets there and he say, bring me your sons. He brings, bring him his sons. You know, Jesse brings his sons and Ah, Samuel said, no, nah, God ain't choose this one. No, nah, not this one. Not this. Not this. Listen, stop looking at their stature. Quit look, quit, stop looking at how they look. That's why I messed up last time with Saul. Because from the shoulders up, he was so much. He looked good. We know how it is, you know. Sometimes we like what we like. But God told him, don't look at this statue. If I have chosen none of these, so Samuel looks at Jesse and say, are these all your sons? He say, well, no, I, I have one. I have one more David. He's, he's behind the mountain tending to the sheep. The next king was doing a servant's job. The next king was being hidden behind a mountain, tending to sheep. But let me tell you about God. 
Let me tell you about his sense of humor. He has this 15-year-old boy behind the mountain. And what he's doing, he's training him and he's developing him how to be the next king. He's teaching him how to war with his hands. Killing lions with his bare hands. So even though it looked like he was last, God had placed him first. So Samuel tells him, he said, listen, go get him. And we're not going to sit down until he get here. We're not going to sit down until he gets here. So when David comes, he shows up. Here he is, this ruddy-looking young man. And I could just imagine, sweaty, and he tired, and, you know, not knowing what's going on. He's looking at his brothers. I could just... Ooh, I, I couldn't imagine being David. His brother's probably looking at him like, man, are you kidding me? But God had greater plans for him. So here, in Psalm 37, we see that the world is full of evildoers. And David implores us not to fret ourselves over them. Because if you're not careful, children of God, you'll look around and it'll seem as if they're flourishing and living life with ease. Little history about myself. I have nine sisters and four brothers. I come from a big family. I come from a big family. My mom, God rest her soul, my mom, <laughs> listen, we used to go to church all the way out in Ecorse, Michigan. And I used to be so bad. I'm like, listen, we got, we, we on Seven Mile and Biltmore, mom. Why are we driving to 16th Street and Visiker? I, I, I just, I, I never understood it. I never understood it. But what she was putting in us, she showed faithfulness. We was always on time. Don't ask me how. Even if we picking up people from church and we got to lap up and sit on each other lap in a conversion van. Listen, I got stories for days. But she was preparing us for life. She was preparing us for life. She was teaching us how to treat people. She was teaching us how to help others. Because we're looking at the numbers but she's looking at the gratefulness, how God was supplying our needs, how we never wanted or needed for nothing. So I began preaching at the age of 10. I remember vividly, it was on an Easter Sunday, and they gave me one, they gave me one verse, John 3.16. Ooh, listen. It was for Easter, and I studied that thing. I studied that thing. I, I said, for God so loved the world. I just preached it, and, and I preached it. Then I realized, okay, maybe there's a call on my life. Then District Elder George Price, he say, son, come, come sit up here. Put me in the pulpit. Okay, maybe this really... Serious, I want to be out here with my friends and be bad in the pews, chew gum. The ushers come with that piece of tissue like, give me that gum. Lord help us. <laughs> my mother looking at me like I'm going to whoop you when we get home, you know. It's, I was okay with that. But then I got older. My athletic career started to flourish. Then I got like Jonah. I, I started to run. I ran, I ran, I ran, I ran. Even when I go to college, God found me there. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm in college and I'm doing Bible studies. How is this happening? 
Now I look up, my roommate is a PK. His father is a pastor. I'm like, oh, my God. How is this happening to me? So you get older, and you're looking at the world, and you think the world is prospering. You think you're missing out on something. You think God has forgotten about you. But the whole time, he's right there. We run, and he's just walking. It's almost like a scary movie. Like, Jason Flores just following you. You running as hard as you can, falling and looking back. He just, he ain't changed his pace. Because eventually, he going to catch you. <laughs> eventually, he's going to catch you. So I've been in a place where it looked like the world was prospering. And I'm in the church living according to the word of God. Yet I'm struggling to, to pay my bills and, and to make ends meet. I'm on my face. I'm on my face. But let me tell you something. Being on your face is the greatest position you can be in because you prostrate, you prostrate before the Lord. So I took my situation and I got a revelation. So I just laid before the Lord. If, Lord, if I'm going to be down here, I might as well talk to you. We must get to a place where we trust God, even when we can't trace him. We have to get to a place where you trust God, even when you cannot trace him. Verse 3 says, if you trust in the Lord and do good, you will dwell in the land and be fed. Children of God, know that God is your source and everything else is just a resource. I'm going to say that again. God is your source, but everything else is a resource. Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter 6, the fowls. Of the air they sow not. He said, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns. Yet our heavenly Father feeds them. And you are not, are you not much more than they? The enemy will always, the enemy will always try to bring distractions. I also often, often tell people that a lie and doubt is just an illusion presenting itself to be real. Just like the wicked spreading himself like the green bay tree. But David said, I look again, and he was no more. So we hear, and we see that distractions will come in all forms and sizes. It can be that boyfriend distraction. It could be that girlfriend, a distraction. It could be that co-worker that's constantly being that thorn in your side. Lord, help me. But I want to encourage you to count it all joy. Don't complain. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, but God, who told you, who told you, saints, that you weren't going to go through nothing? Who told you, even that Jesus said, Father, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. See, see, the prophecy, what we need, we need a nevertheless anointing. Nevertheless, Father, I'm going to keep pressing on. Nevertheless, Father, this is hard for me, but your will and not my will. You have to know that God is somewhere in every situation we're going through. Lord, I don't know why these people keep trying me, but <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, I'm not all the way delivered, but nevertheless. Yes, I want to pull up, and as a young people say, I want to press them, but nevertheless. We don't have time, saints, 
to be fighting with our enemies. Mm -mm. We ain't got to fight with them. Just, just let them push us to our destiny. Let them push you to your destiny. Let them push you to your destiny. For this is an excellent season we're living in. It's an excellent season. You know, we done went through that COVID time and it really messed a lot of, a lot of people up, a lot of marriages up. Ooh, but God is a redeemer of time. Look at your neighbor and say, no time for distractions. And regardless of what the enemy is throwing at you, like Nehemiah, do not come down off that wall because you're doing a good work. I encourage you that salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in them. Therefore, children of God, I leave you with this. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God bless you. As we do as often, real quick, ushers. This is his information on the screen. He has Cash App. You can do it by Zelle or Venmo. Uh, the, cash the cash tag is The Black Athlete. His Zelle is jdwhite313 at gmail.com. His Venmo is at John D. White 313. Those of you who are online, I know you got a better view, but if you don't see it, this is if you don't want to, obviously you all know you can give to the ushers via cash. Uh, if you uh, have a debit, um, you can actually still see Kenny um, and just uh, specify that you want it for Pastor John D. White. Also, if you came in late and you haven't paid your tithe, we ask that you pay your tithe um, and your offering. Now, Pastor, we don't have any special. Uh... Oh, yeah, I'm going to put it up. I haven't forgot about that. No, I was talking about special like offering. Nothing, nothing coming up. Just all the way to sex. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Trustee Stan Jones, if you can wave your hand. Listen, if you haven't paid your tithe, you can see that man in the, in the great red and white. Not his beard, his actual outfit. <laughs> Say that one more time, Pastor. Silver Fox Club, Silver Fox Club Pastor said. I got it. I'm, I'm Patch. Just call me Patchy. I ain't got to the club yet. I'm struggling to get in there. You know, I cut my hair low, cause, but if I grow it out, I am a little patchy. <laughs> you say don't rush. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I stick with the patch. I stick with the patch on the side of my head. Hey, y'all, look, the other day, I was looking in the mirror. I thought something, uh, Keisha would have a good laugh out of this. I thought it was up my nose, okay? I thought, I, I'm like, man, I'm, I, listen, I almost, when I went to the hospital, I was, I was trying to get whatever was in my nose, right? Come to find out. Y'all laughing already? It was a gray hair. And I'm thinking to myself, no. It's in my nose, too? <laughs> now, you talking about, you talking about a scary movie and, and Jesus chasing you and your calling. That's like the gray hair for me. I am running from the gray hair, but it's just the walking, and it's just catching up with me. God. Rice, see what I'm saying? That, that's B to B's at that point, Rice. You know, Rice, I don't think I'm going to get there. No, I'm just playing. I like to pick with y'all. Listen, everybody had a chance to get Everyone standing to your feet. Once again, thank God for Pastor Jackson, Lady Jackson, family. Thank you for the opportunity to come to speak to the Lord's people on today. As we dismiss, what uplifted hands. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Father, we thank you for the angel of this house, Lord God. Father, we ask you to strengthen him, Lord God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Bless his life, his wife, his children, everything that pertaineth unto him. Bless him exceeding abundantly above all he can ever ask or think. 
Father God, we ask you right now to bless this ministry, Lord God. Bless this ministry, Lord God. Breathe upon it, Lord God. Father God, bless these, your great people, Lord God. As they leave this place, but never from your presence, Lord God, we ask you to cover them in your blood. Keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Until we meet again, in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>